So I fooled you, let's talk about facial development real quickly. So uh, like in the previous lecture, <clears throat> Uh, the, the development of the face is all about these prominences, the frontonasal prominence, the maxillary prominence. Uh, so let's move into these in detail. So you can see here an actual photograph of uh, these prominences as they're developing. <clears throat> in week five, uh, you can see these prominences have begun to form. By week 10, the uh, adult appearance is really quite prominent. We can see that the uh, medial nasal prominences fuse in the midline, forming the philtrum of the lip. That's why the philtrum of the lip looks different than the surrounding uh, structures. The lateral nasal prominences are separated from the maxillary prominences <clears throat> by the nasolacrimal groove. So within the nasolacrimal groove, that's where uh, the nasolacrimal duct will develop. And so here we see uh, ghosted in behind these bones is that nasolacrimal duct. This is the connection between your eyes and your nose. So if you've ever like, uh, you know, cried, bawled your eyes out so much that your nose has gotten all snotty, uh, then this explains why that happens because your tears travel through the duct into your nose. I don't know what that's like. I've never cried in my life. So uh, I'll have to take your word for it, but that's what I understand. Uh, also, these prominences have impacts on the um, palate. The, uh, so the maxillary prominences or processes here uh, are going to fuse in the midline, come together uh, to fuse the palate so that the palate is one uh, complete structure. Uh, and the philtrum of the lip ends up developing the first uh, four maxillary teeth. But this fusion can't take place initially because the tongue is actually taking up that space. The uh, distal tongue buds are growing and developing uh, and they project into the presumptive nasal cavity. So as these structures descend and separate from each other, they end up forming uh, the palate and the tongue where they are in the mouth and the uh, nasal cavity. But if those processes don't work right, then what happens is the uh, maxillary processes that form the palatine shelves, they end up not merging in the midline, causing a cleft palate. Uh, so we can see this process, this normal process taking place. This is what we expect to happen as these uh, bones fuse, but uh, what can happen is a lack of fusion. And so here are a number of different uh, cases where that has happened. So first in the upper left is normal. The palates uh, have fused into, um, you know, this, um, the hard maxillary palate with, in conjunction with the medial nasal prominences except for a t small little foramen, incisive foramen, uh, through which uh, the nasopalatine nerve travels to supply that region. But uh, any of these different regions can end up uh, not fusing appropriately. So here uh, we, can, we see the difference between a unilateral uh, type of cleft lip or palate and a bilateral down here. We see this is a unilateral cleft lip, so the palate has formed, the palate's okay, the lip just didn't form the uh, soft tissue over the lip. Here we have a cleft lip and jaw, uh, so the maxillary prominence didn't fuse with the medial nasal prominence on one side unilaterally. Going down here, we have a bilateral cleft lip and jaw. The philtrum is basically hanging there on its own. Uh, and the palates did not fuse with the filtrum on either side or the, the medial nasal prominences. We can also have an isolated cleft palate, or we can have a uh, cleft palate, a complete cleft palate, with the uh, anterior cleft lip as well. <clears throat> so these are all variations on that process. Here we can see examples, uh, example images of these different uh, failures in fusion, the, the cleft palate here, the um, bilateral cleft lip, and here we actually see where the um, medial nasal uh, or the um, 
uh, uh, the nasal prom the maxillary prominence and the uh, nasal prominences did not completely fuse here. Uh, so we have that opening to the nasolacrimal duct. And then just to be aware, micronathia is kind of a related condition, but it's related to, it's, it's not one of these uh, prominence fusion issues. It's related to the, um, the pharyngeal uh, the pharyngeal arch, the first pharyngeal arch, and the lack of development of tissue in that pharyngeal arch. Uh, so also, uh, uh, the mandibular hypoplasia uh, is another term here. So, thanks for watching.